right, you are still watching the special uh, production of the governorship uh, election and the House of Assembly elections, uh, which were conducted yesterday, and the results are gradually uh, trickling in. My name is Christian Nogodo. And I'm in Kechi. Nana, thanks for staying with us on this special coverage of Nigeria's governorship and State House of Assembly elections. As Mr. Christian said, the results are still trickling in after Saturday's election. A few states have been announced and collation continues in other states. Let's take a look at the results announced so far. Omar Namdi is the winner of the election in Jigawa State. Namadi of the All Progressives Congress scored 618,449 to defeat his closest rival, Mustafa Lamido of the People's Democratic Party, who scored 368,726. And in Gombe State, the governor, Inua Yahaya, and governorship candidate of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has won the state governorship election. INEX returning officer for Gombe State, Professor Meimuna Waziri, declared Governor Yaya winner, having scored a total of 342,821 votes to defeat PDP's Jubrin Barde, who scored 233,132, and NNPP's and uh, Kashimu. Meilan Takir, who polled 19,861 votes. Governor Inua Yaya, in his acceptance speech, says the victory is for all citizens of the state, assuring them that the next four years will be added dividends for the people. All right, now Diko Umar Rada of the All Progressives Congress has been declared the winner of the governorship election in Kasina State. The INEC Coalition Officer for the state governorship election, Professor Mwazu Abubakar of the Federal University of Sao, declares the candidate winner having scored a total of 859,892 votes. PDP Senator Yakubu Lado came second with 486,620 votes, while Nura Khalil of the NNPP came second with 8,264 votes. PR Police Governorship candidate Imran Gino came a distance fourth with 4,226 votes. And in Kwara State, North Central Nigeria, Governor Abdul Razak Abdul Rahman has won re-election as a governor of the state for the second term in office. Abdul Razak, who contested under the platform of the All Progressives Congress, polled 273,424 votes to beat his closest rival, Yaman Abdullahi of the People's Democratic Party. May Malabuni is the winner of the election in your base state, Buni of the All Progressive Congress, scored 317,113 to defeat his closest rival, Sharif Abdullahi of the People's Democratic Party, who scored 104,259. And the Independent National Electoral Commission has declared Governor Shei Makinde as elected governor of your state. Coalition Officer Professor Adebayo Bamire says that the PDP candidate polled a total of 563,756 votes to defeat his closest rival and candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Teslim Kolawole Folari, while the Accord Party candidate and former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank, Adebayo Adelabu, managed to score 38,357. Our correspondent, Ulu Tayo Famous School, has more details in this report. It's a combination of weeks of intense politicking and lobbying to occupy the highest political seat in Nigeria's peace at the state or your. Incumbent Governor Shei Makinde haven't scored the highest number of votes across the 33 local governments. Makinde Olushe, the Abiyodun of B BDP, haven't satisfied the requirements of the law. Is he ever declared winner 
and returned elected. The declaration is a welcome development for enthusiastic supporters who had laid siege on the Parliament Road Office of INEC in Ibadan to so hear the final results. And I told people, I said, I've been in the College of Bible for some time. This is the best performing governor so far. Whoever doesn't like what I'm saying can jump into the, into the lagoon. Eh? This is the best performing governor so far. And I'm very happy and I'm sure that he's going to perform more in the second term. I don't even just imagine the kind of the joy that is in me right now. I'm highly excited for the victory that we have just gotten from the poll, the general poll that just concluded. Given us another mandate of another four years, it is highly appreciated. However, the elections were not without some itches. Security agents who monitor the process reeled out so some of them. went on smoothly, uh, maybe for a few pockets of uh, violent here and there, but generally the election can be adjudged has been very free, fair, at least credible. And also, um, this is uh, made possible by the joint collaboration among the security agencies. Yeah, the people following the rules, the thugs or supporters who want to be unruly, uh, attempting to disrupt the process and even to snatch ballot boxes. It's not that they didn't come out, but we prevented them. With this convincing victory, the course is now clear for marking this to focus on governance. Olotai of Emo School, Arise News, Ibadan. The Ogun State Governor, Dabwa Biodun, has been declared the winner of a governorship election conducted on Saturday. Governor Biodun was declared winner by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Today, the incumbent governor, governor defeated his closest, closest rival, Ladi Adebutu of the PDP, with 13,915 vote margin to emerge victorious. He scored 276,298 votes to defeat Adebutu, who polled a total of 262,383 votes. Candidate of the Africa Democratic Party, ADP, B. Otegbeye, came third with 94,754 votes. And to Akwaibom State, South South Nigeria, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Umore No, has been declared the winner and got 356,348 votes to beat YPP Senator Basi Akban who scored 136,262 votes, and APC's Kanemo Udofia, who came third. I, Professor Emmanuel M. Adigio, hereby satisfy that I am the returning officer for the 2023 Akwai Bond State Governorship election held on the 18th day of March. 2023. That Eno Umo Basi of PDP, having satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. All right, we have in the studios now Oluwale Osaze Uzi, who is a former INEC National Commissioner and uh, in our offside studio, we also have Samson Itodo, the executive director of Yaga Africa. Well, maybe I should uh, start with uh, Oluwole uh, Osazeuzi. Welcome to our special coverage of the governorship and House of uh, Assembly or Houses of Assembly elections. You know, tell us. I mean the changing pattern in the voting, particularly with the results, and seeing a state like Katsina churning out over one million voters, close to two million in the governorship election. All elections are local? Indeed. First of all, let me quickly correct that. I was never a national commissioner in HICA. Director, director of uh, yes. publicity. So. Um, uh, yes, in the sense all elections are local. Um, there are all sorts of issues thrown up in the local politics that uh, may not be reflected in national politics. Um, it's, uh, generally in Nigeria, we seem to concentrate a lot more on the presidential uh, election 
and um, the figures of turnouts usually is higher during presidential elections. But passions are also high when it comes to governorship uh, elections. Local issues come into come into play, and um, some are out of the mundane. And where that is, then you find enthusiasm, and with that enthusiasm comes a higher voter turnout. So um, it's not unusual to find some states where the particular issues turn up that, um, yes, look at Lagos, for example. Um, there was a determination by the party that has been in control since 1998, 1999, that, look, we, we lost in the presidential. We should ensure, we should mobilize our people and ensure that we do not uh, lose in this governorship. The stakes for them were probably higher. So you see those kind of things playing out. Great. Okay, um, Unkechi, you want to go to the offside yes. studio with Itodo? Yes, uh, let's go to our offside studio. Uh, thanks for joining us. And just looking at all the results that have been collated so far and the election that was conducted yesterday, what's your sort of comparison between the governorship and state house of assembly elections versus the presidential elections that we had two weeks ago and we also know that this election was postponed it was supposed to happen last week do you think that postponement had was part of the factors that played into what happened during this election yesterday well thanks um for the invitation but before i respond to your question permit me to on behalf of yaga africa convey our um, regrets um, and also commiseration with um, Arise TV over the attack of a member of your crew um, yesterday. That dastardly act um, is highly condemnable and journalists who are in the course of um, performing their national duty shouldn't in any way you know, be intimidated or attacked. And, and we condemn that act and more importantly call on security agencies um, to address this issue because it doesn't bode well for our democracy. Um, to the question about, you know, um, the comparison between the presidential elections and the governorship elections, in the build up to this election, there were three tests that were on the table. The first test was the responsiveness test and its responsiveness on the part of INEC to address some of the shortcomings and the challenges that we witnessed in the presidential election. And these challenges relate to logistics management, um, electronic transmission of, of results, as well as the transparency you know, of the deployments of personnel for the election. So that was the first test. The second test was the integrity test that the results management process will be transparent, um, it will be devoid of any form of manipulation, and that the final outcome of all the elections will be a reflection of the vote cast. So the integrity test was the second test. And the third test was the resilience test, that despite the unmet expectations from the presidential elections, despite the disappointment of citizens with the way the elections, in particular the process, was managed in the presidential elections, that citizens were still going to show up at this election. If you look across these three tests, there is a partial um, sort of compliance um, with the first test, which is the responsiveness test. Because compared to the presidential elections, there was marked improvement in the deployment of election personnel as well as the materials to the polling stations. And from a Yaga Africa perspective, that polling units opened early across majority of the polling stations that we observed, um, that the personnel arrived early, but there were still some challenges with logistics, um, like you see in Kwande local government of Benue State, where the elections couldn't hold yesterday. The second about the transparency of the results management process. Compared to the presidential elections, the INEC election results viewing portal functioned optimally, the same way the BVAS also functioned optimally for accreditation. And so the results are on the INEC viewing portal. However, the manual collation still leaves so much to be desired. We can see attacks at collation centers. We can see how results you know, are being changed and being falsified. And that, again, is unacceptable. And it's one of the dark side from these elections. And lastly, on resilience test, quite frankly, 
The turnout for this election was extremely poor. That whilst it is sad that the turnout for this election was poor, but I think that there is a dimension about the resilience test that citizens did pass. And for those citizens who, despite their disappointment with the process, showed up yesterday to cast their vote, they deserve commendation. But more importantly, it's the citizens that spoke, that reported cases of manipulation, voter suppression, and intimidation. Those are the heroes of the 2023 um, governorship elections, because they insisted that their rights must be respected. They insisted that this process must witness their participation. And I think it is, you know, it does really signify hope, you know, moving forward from this election. All right. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, um, Itodo, there. Uh, let's uh, come back to you, uh, Osaze uh, Uzi. I asked the question, despite the low turnout and uh, the little comparison between the presidential and the governorship election, we have agreed that all elections are local. But look at figures from Katsina to Oyo State, you know? Katsina is well over a million people voting there, where you have uh, the winner, uh, the APC governorship candidates winning by 859,892 to 486,630. And you put that together, you know, it's uh, gargantuan. I mean, we're talking in a state like Katsina, you go to, uh, or your state, you know, you say have, you know, very significant um, number of voters and the rest. What do we attribute this to? Um, is it because the politics is local? Well, it's difficult for me to say. I haven't actually quite honestly studied um, the uh, nuances in Katsina State. Although, if I remember correctly, I'm not, so although that's a high number, I don't, well, percentage wise, I'm not too sure it's up to 30%, actually. I think the total number of uh, registered voters and number of people who have collected their PVCs is much, much, much higher than that. Um, but having said that, we should be careful because um, until the final breakdown of the results are known, let us see how many people pass through Beavers, for example, then we can compute uh, voter turnout. Um, but there are certain peculiarities in states that encourage uh, participation and turnout. Um, especially where it's close, where it's fiercely contested and there are local issues to be sorted out, then you'll find, you'll find that kind of more enthusiasm in some states than in others. In others, in, the, in place, eight states, for example, where there are no governorship elections, turnout is likely to be much, much less than uh, they, they would have been if there was governorship election. Local government elections generally in Nigeria tend to suffer, although we say all politics are local, tend to suffer the most. They, they have the lowest turnout in, uh, in, um, in, 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 in our elections. I, I, oddly enough, it's generally the presidential elections, national assembly that, that have more people turn out. Even national assembly elections, when, they, when you do by elections, you don't find many people, turnout is usually very, very low. So it seems that Nigerians are more interested in the presidential, whereas some people argue that no, they should be more interested in the local, the immediate ones, the ones where they see the people, the people representing their constituencies, they are supposed to live in the constituencies, not people you are sending off to uh, Abuja. Um, so some states are higher than others because of local peculiarities. We have to study each state and find out why is it high, why is it low, but generally because of certain controversies within the states themselves. Yes, uh, Mr. Usaze Uzi, you've spoken about why you think some states may have turned out a high ter uh, voter turnout. However, there are people who are of the mindset that Nigerians are just not that interested in politics. Nigerians are just so tired, they just want to stay at home. They might be scared. So do you think it's more of voter apathy or more of voter intimidation or more voter suppression that you see in places where there's lower voter uh, turnout? It's a combination of factors. Again, local factors play a great role. Um, in some states, um, the issue of uh, uh, suppression is higher, incidence of suppression is much, much higher than in um, other states. 
I don't think I agree with that um, uh, people are tired of politics. On the contrary, I think Nigerians are very passionate about their politics. I think the visions about political discourse is high, as high in this country as it is in any other country in the world. In, in Nigeria, probably higher than others. People are interested. People are determined. But there are lots of issues, the challenges that they face that uh, voters, citizens in other countries don't face. In spite of all that, I think a lot of people still generally uh, turn out. There is a, there's some apathetic, some believe that the system uh, has failed them and they don't see, the, uh, they don't think uh, their votes will count or their votes count. Um, some are worried about their safety, but if you, if you go onto social media, you'll see lots of people realizing the challenge and the, 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 the fact that they might be attacked still go out and secretly also record when they are being intimidated. In spite of everything, they, they, they do come out. Of course, when they hear gunshots, they see thugs, then they, of course, naturally, they take off for their own safety. Yes, indeed. I mean, they would uh, take off for their own safety. But let's uh, look at uh, the election in Lagos and uh, the results, too. That's another uh, state that, you know, voters, although turn out uh, likely to vote in uh, the governorship election, not uh, comparable, nothing compared to over 5 million uh, PVC holders and the rest. But again, would we say it's encouraging? Would we say, you know, uh, it's discouraging and going to dwindle uh, further the number of participants in elections in that state? Osaze? Oh, okay. I think we'll have Vitodo back now. Um, Osaze, uh, if you just uh, give Vitodo uh, the chance now. Vitodo, well, nice to have you back. Yeah. I hope you uh, got my question. And speaking about Lagos and whether people are going to get discouraged, um, quite frankly, there are several reasons um, that should bother Nigerians um, with the conduct of the election in Lagos. Um, first, in the build-up to this election, um, Yaga Africa and civil society organizations published the Election Manipulation Risk Index. And from the first to the second to the third report, Lagos was considered a high-risk state. And so what we see in this election was projected. It was, it, was, it was expected. The big question is what did state institutions do you know, to inspire confidence on the part of people? Secondly, to also create a safe and secure environment for people to exercise their franchise. I think as a country, we've got to rise in condemnation of this ethnic profiling, this ethnic slur that we experienced in the build-up to this election. Quite frankly, I am worried, I am disturbed with the way that ethnicity has been exploited as a campaign tool, but more importantly, as a tool of suppressing voters who are registered, you know, and who are citizens of this great country. I think that it is important that as a country, we recognize that this polarization is unacceptable and state institutions and public officials need to rise to the occasion. This is a time for national healing and reconciliation. And I hope that the leaders, whether victors or those who lost in the election, will consider this very important. If you check the level of turnout, and what were the fundamental issues? In the build-up to the elections, there were serious controversies around the PVC collection. And people believe that INEC deliberately denied people, you know, um, their PVCs in Lagos State because often um, voters will go to the INEC office um, to collect their PVCs. They will be told their PVCs are not ready and their PVCs have not been produced. Whilst INEC at the headquarters will constantly say that we've produced all the PVCs. So it's just clear that there's something actually missing somewhere in this entire value chain of PVC collection. And people went into this election with that background, with that anger of deprivation you know, of their PVCs. The second issue was around the campaign itself and how it went. You could see that across board that politicians exploited and used violence for campaigns. There were places where other politicians or opposition politicians couldn't campaign um, because they were met with the violence and attacks by talks. 
And what you saw in Lagos is talks actually going on rampage, depriving people of the opportunity and their constitutional rights to vote. And I would say, yes, people may get discouraged, but this is not a time you know, for citizens to get discouraged. That the level of resilience that people demonstrated, particularly people in Lagos, at least did make some impact. And so staying away and being disengaged is just going to make the situation worse. And so continue to encourage Nigerians, particularly those in Lagos or in other parts of the country, to participate in the process. They are citizens of this country, they have a constitutional right, and if they are registered to vote in Lagos, then they should be entitled to vote. And no individual, whether state or private individual, should arrogate to themselves the authority to deprive these people of going to exercise their franchise. Yes, indeed. Nobody should really be deprived, you know, in carrying out uh, that uh, constitutional responsibility. Well, thanks so very much, uh, Samson Itodo. We know you're supposed to be attending a meeting uh, about this. Uh, Samson Itodo is the executive director of Yaga Africa. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be interrogating the emergence of governors. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching this special coverage of Nigeria's governorship elections and state houses of assembly. I'm Kichi Nana. And I'm Christian Nogodo. Thanks for staying with us. Now, the All Progressives Congress has accused the Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos State, Badebo Rhodes Fiver, of being a bad loser. In a statement, APC spokesman in Lagos State, Sheye Oladejo, said the party's attention has been drawn to a statement credited to the Labour Party candidate where he accuses INEC and the police of provoking the Goshens. And the Nigerian Union of Journalists Broadcasting Corporation of Oyo State Chapel has condemned in strong terms attack on the corporation's crew deployed to monitor the governorship and state House of Assembly elections in Lagos State. The BCOS news crew were assaulted and their equipment damaged by hoodlums led by women at Onigbongbo area of the state on Saturday. In a statement signed by the BCOS NUJ chairperson, Dukwe Feintola, the union observes that the assault was a misdirected one as the crew was carrying out its responsibility of monitoring and covering the election when the hoodlums pounced on them. The executive director of the National Human Rights Commission, Tony Ojuku, has vowed to invite Musilu Akinsaya, popularly known as MC Oluoma, to answer questions after the governorship and state houses of assembly elections. He is recommending the prosecution of those responsible for the violation of rights of Nigerians during the elections. We'll be calling those people to account. But you know our processes involve fair hearing. You know, we are not like police or somebody that can just arrest you. First of all, we must give you fair hearing. That is asking you to explain, you know, and then we take it further from there. The statement is worrisome. Even though I listened to the uh, commissioner of police in Lagos State yesterday, he said they are investigating it, but that will not stop the commission from carrying out its own mandate. The Independent National Electoral Commission says it will address the anomalies that characterize the governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Festo Sokoye, INET National Commissioner in charge of voter education and publicity, said this at a press conference in Abuja. Okoye says allegations of voters' inducement, harassment and manipulation of results will be reviewed and addressed. The Commission promised Nigerians that there will be improved processes during the governorship and state assembly elections held yesterday, Saturday, 18th March 2023. We have left no stone unturned as far as the processes and procedures under the control of the Commission we are concerned. However, for difficult and, for, and unforeseen circumstances 
outside the Commission's control, we did our best to respond, especially where processes were disrupted by actors over whom we have little or no control. Such diabolical behavior did not only affect citizens, but also impacted on the Commission's officials and processes. Nevertheless, where we could not deploy to enable citizens to vote, the Commission took decisive action to remobilize to such places to enable citizens to exercise their franchise. Well, INEC says its office in Abia State has been invaded and attacked. INEC says its office in Obingwa local government area was invaded by thugs. The Commission says it has alerted security agencies and is monitoring the situation. Some of our staff were abducted, some were harassed, some were intimidated, some were hospitalized, and in one case killed. And INEC has also confirmed the release of 19 members of its ad hoc staff who were kidnapped in Imo State on their way to conduct the House of Assembly election in Idiato South. They were released following intervention by security agents, but election materials, including beavers' machines, are still missing. Some of our staff were abducted. Some were intimidated. Some were hospitalized and in one case killed. Nevertheless, where we could not deploy to enable citizens to vote, the Commission took decisive action to remobilize to such places to enable citizens to exercise their franchise. Well, civil society organizations have called for the prosecution of those who disrupted Saturday's governorship and houses of assembly election across states. Yaga Africa CSO Situation Room and the Albino Foundation at separate post-election briefings are unanimous in the findings that the elections were mad by violence. Our eyes correspondent, Punairman Benjamin, tells us more. As the result of last Saturday's election continued to trickle in, those who observed the election across the state have been releasing reports of the observation. They identified vote buying, intimidation of voters, inducement, ballot box snatching, and in some cases killings as some of the vices undermining the electoral process. In some states, party agents were seen distributing food items, money, clothes, fertilizers, and collecting bank accounts from voters. Observers reported that the election materials for Ward 10, Unit 2, in Emoha local government of River State were hijacked at gunpoint by thugs. The bus conveying the materials and personnel was also hijacked. Our watching the vote observers in Osho, the Solo local government, Lagos State, reported armed thugs affiliated with the APC, shooting sporadically, which disrupted the process in two polling units located inside Okota Grammar School and five polling units in, this, in the solar community. This resulted in the process being suspended. The CSO Situation Room alleges that party agents were also seen uploading results that did not tally with the actual outcomes. On INEC portal, a quick review of INEC results viewing portal at 12 noon Revealed that reviews two uploads for PU 068, Ojukwe Town Hall, Abuloma Amadi Ama Ward, and PU 0229, Ward 07, both in Portacot local government areas of River State. The first is a, photogra is a photograph of a person, and the second is an empty result sheet. This is worrying in the light of the fact that uh, only concluded results should be uploaded on the IREF. While the Albino Foundation is accusing INEC of not making available assistive devices for persons with disabilities. A proper audit of the distribution of assistive devices should be carried out to ascertain what the cause and gaps were that led to the uh, poor availability of assistive devices to identify polling units with persons with disability. The National Human Rights Commission has also condemned the attack on Arise News crew and all the violence recorded across the country. The Commission received 
with great concern the attack on Arise News crew at a Legoshi Palace in Lagos. We call on law enforcement agents to investigate this and other incidents of violence against journalists and bring the perpetrators to book. Nigerians will be expecting that all relevant agencies will work to ensure that these challenges are not repeated in future elections. Punarman Benjamin, Arise News. And the former governor of Enugu State and the senator representing Enugu East and the Senate, Dr. Chimaroke Namani, has sent a message of congratulations to his rival, Kelvin Chuku of the Labour Party, over his victory in Saturday's senatorial election. That uh, election was rescheduled, and Senator Namani, who contested the election under the People's Democratic Party, in his congratulatory message, says the outcome of the election reflects the wishes of the majority of constituents, adding that the result of the election is in tandem with a rave of the moment in the southeast zone who have identified with Labour Party. He is asking his supporters to remain calm and accept the outcome of the uh, election in good faith. All right, we still have uh, the former director of uh, publicity and voter education with us, Osaze uh, Uzi. Um, that's a very magnanimous one. Uh, not so much of it has been heard in Nigerian uh, politics. I think uh, the pioneer uh, loser uh, then in 2015 was uh, His Excellency President Goodluck Jonathan, who congratulated uh, our outgoing President uh, Buhari. And this coming from, you know, that uh, tough election. Tough because... Uh, uh, the other Chuku, you know, was gruesomely murdered and the rest. And uh, the, the uh, Naman is saying, look, it's the rave of the moment. The LUP syndrome, as uh, our South Eastern uh, brothers want to call it. What are your thoughts here? Yeah. Yes, it's uh, rather magnanimous and quite uh, gracious of him, actually. Um, we've not seen any noticeable, uh, notable pronouncements such as that since um, Good Luck Jonathan called um, now President uh, Buhari to congratulate him even before the official announcement of the results. He considered uh, defeat in the best traditions of uh, democratic practices that you find in other climes. Mm. Um, I wish many more people will agree to do that, but because of the trust deficit, because of the issues that people have raised, and because of all the uh, shenanigans, some real, some not so real, um, nobody accepts, few people accept that they lost fair and square. Uh, they say, well, everybody comes out and says, uh, if it was a fair and square thing, I wouldn't have minded, I would have been the first to congratulate, but it's hardly ever, it's hardly ever so. Sometimes certain things happen, there's skirmishes in maybe one out of 200 units, but you take that and you blow it out of proportion, and you say that marred the elections. Uh, I've heard things like sham elections and uh, uh, such deep words used mm. for so many of these elections, they're not, they're not really fair, especially where things are not as widespread as, 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 they, as they say they are. But it's uh, very great of uh, Senator Namani, former governor of Enugu State. For him, I think he's a two, three-time senator, yeah. two-time governor. Absolutely. So since 1999, he's been relevant to the politics he's of the Enugu. He's the progenitor of the Ebano family, Ebano you family know, which, of course, uh, has taken root in the entire Enugu, Enugu State, State and probably spread into in the other southeastern states. Yes, the figurehead, the father, mm. the founder. And for him to lose and then to just concede like that, it's it's rather mad. Very, very very gallant. You exactly, know. <laughs> and quite not really expected. But like you said, this mm. particular election, this senator election, was very competitive, especially because of the death of Kelvin Chuku's brother. Mm. And when you look at it in that context, he just had to do this, yeah, so. especially to calm down his supporters, mm. because this man is a man of influence. And now he said, "Look, I've lost." Calm down. It's the wish of the people. Exactly. It's the wish of the people. He just couldn't have said it any better. But before we let you go, yeah. I'd just like to ask you a question. There's so many parts uh, joining this election. The citizens, you have the security agencies, you have the politicians, the, uh, the observers, the media. And then at the center of all this, 
you have INEC, the Electoral Body Commission. Yes. What are some things that the INEC can do, or just one thing mm -hmm. that the INEC can do just to improve? And we know they've worked hard, they've really tried, and we just saw that press conference where they were saying that even INEC officials, ad hoc staff, people that are working for free, were intimidated. Someone was kidnapped. even killed, kidnapped. Killed and and so yeah. what can INEC really do just to improve on the electoral process? There are so many things that can be done. I, but I think, um, just off the heart, I think the, probably the most important thing is communication. Um, there's been some lapses in the way they have communicated to citizens. A lot of the criticisms come out of, I don't want to use the word ignorance, of, but lack of knowledge of how the process works. And I think INEC could and still can communicate a lot more. So the press conference today was a, was a good uh, step in that uh, direction. In the last two, three weeks, a lot of uh, communication with the public has been through press statements. But press statements have their own usage, but they have limited value sometimes because uh, very often you want follow-up questions, you want further explanations, you want to drill down. Um, so when you say it's not hacking, it's glitches, people want to ask what kind of glitches prevented you from uploading uh, things. And it may be very good reasons, but you're not explaining, especially as at when due. Uh, timely communication is so, so essential and it will not satisfy everybody, but at least the fair-minded people will sit down and have some reflection on some of the things. So you communicate your challenges to them at all, all, all times and listen a little bit more from what the public are saying. I think that's probably more than anything else is, is, is needed. All right. Thanks so very much, uh, Osaze Uzi, former director of publicity and voter education of the Independent National Electoral Commission for coming to add some spies to um, our special coverage of the governorship election and state houses of assembly election. The results are pouring in, but we'll go on a short break and we'll tell you the latest uh, results uh, beginning from Sokoto and those that are still pending. Stay with us.